Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Um, today I'm going to take a look at Friday's diabolical Sudoku from the Daily Telegraph. Um, it's the hardest puzzle that they publish each week and in my opinion it's the hardest puzzle published in any newspaper that I've seen anywhere in the world. Um, of course there are harder puzzles um, but you have to you, you won't find them in a, in a regularly published national broadsheet. Um, so without further ado let's take a look at this. Um, it's always with some trepidation that I do these live solves because you're never quite sure how hard the puzzle is going to be. Um, but what I'll do as I go through is that if I find, as for example in this square here, when we think about where can a 2 go in this square, you can see it's limited to just two positions. Now if I spot where that's happening, I'll just make little pencil marks to remind me of that fact, um, just because they tend to be quite useful um, later on. Um, you can see that this square here has to be a 3, um, that square there has to be a 9, that square there has to be a 4. Whenever we get these little runs of three numbers in any 3x3 three three box, always try and use those early in the solve. So similarly I'm looking at this 314 and this 5 here and the 2. Um, at the very least they're likely to give me pencil marks. They may well give me numbers, but pencil marks are also good. Um, Okay, so, so we can place fives in like that. This has to be a five here. Pencil marks and fives at the bottom there. Pencil mark nines. I'm going to take a look at this column now. You can see one, three, and eight needed in column two and only this 3 is really interacting there. So this square here can be a 1 or an 8. I'm going to notate that just because in diabolical puzzles these, these restricted cells often turn out to be important. What it does mean is I'll also have to remember as we go through that uh, I've used different logic for this one 8 than I'm using for the pencil mark 5s but I hopefully I can, I'll be able to keep a track of that. Okay, we can pencil mark some threes into there. Look, that might be useful. Yeah, that gives us another number. This has to be a three. This has to be a three. Ah, now we have a what's called a hidden single. Now, if we look at row two of the grid and ask ourselves where we can place a two, um, we have a two here preventing there from being a two there. This two is preventing a two here. And this two is preventing a two from here. So all of that means there's only one spot left in row two for two to go into. And that gives us another number as well. Um, this has to be a six now. Again, just simple Sudoku rules, nothing clever. That's a six down there. Five, seven, eight to place into these three cells. Can pencil mark some fives. And that will resolve that five too. Sixes into these two. Ah, in fact, it's six as well. Look at that. That's a six. This must be seven, eight. This must be seven, eight. And we can pencil mark sixes down there. Seven, eights also into these two cells. Look. So two, four, nine to place. Uh, ah, so this cell here must be a four. And again, I'm going to enter in some pencil marks there with these, this 2-9 pair, just because that might be useful. You can see I can use this 4 and this 4 to place a 4 into that position. Let's do that 2. Add the pencil marks at the bottom there. Uh, da -da -da -da. This has to be a 7 or an 8. I'll pencil mark that in. We're getting to the point now where we're going to have to spot something clever, I suspect. I doubt there'll be too many more giveaway numbers. Um, I'm just going to check row 2 again. So 6, 8, and 9. 
Ah, no, look at the row two. We've got another hidden single because this cell can't be a six because of this six. And this cell can't be a six because of this six. So in fact, that's a six. Um, so now this is an eight, nine pair here. So you can immediately see a few cells here that are getting very, very restricted. We'll have to think about how to use those in a minute. One, three, and eight. I'm tempted. Um, this is a one or an eight here. I am tempted, though, to have a look at these two boxes at the top where we've got these two numbers that are being limited to just two possibilities and just see what we can see. Um, let's just have a look along here. So this cell here is a 1, 3, or an 8. This cell here is quite restricted as well. Um, can be one or two, can be three, can be four, can't be five, six, seven, so that's three, four, or eight. In fact, that can't be one because we have a one here, so that, uh, we're starting to get something that looks, looks like it might be interesting here. I'm now going to take a look at columns two and columns three because one thing to look out for in these diabolical puzzles are these bent triples. So I'm going to have a look now at this row, because it's, it's got five numbers in it already. We've got four, five, seven, and eight placed into this cell. So there's a five there, so four, there's a seven here, that's a four or an eight. There you go, bent triple. So the question is, when we find this bent triple here, how useful is it? Now sometimes, as we've seen before, um, these bent triples turn out to be in an arrangement which is called a Y-wing. Uh, and a Y wing would be let's let's say for example we remove the eight from this combination. So now you can see that with regard to this square, whether this is a three or a four, uh, I'm forcing either this cell or this cell to contain an eight. Yeah, so that would allow that allows me to know that either this cell or this cell will definitely contain an 8 in the finished solution and therefore I could eliminate an 8 as a candidate from any cell that could see both this cell and this cell so what would be an example of that? Well this cell for example would be an example of a cell that could see both this cell and this cell and I'd be able to eliminate an 8 here and it looks from the pencil marks that I did earlier that that would be a useful thing to do. Now here we've got something subtly different. I've got another 8 in this as a possibility within this box. Now that transfer or transforms this. We can no longer describe this as being a Y wing. This is now something called an XYZ wing. Um, and the difference, the difference is only subtle, but it means an XYZ wing is slightly less powerful. And let me try and explain why. So we now need to ask ourselves the question, okay, well, is it possible that none of these squares contains an 8? Okay, so can we arrange the digits that are left as possibilities in these three squares in such a way that none of them contain an 8? And it's impossible. We can quickly see that. Let's, let's, so if, if none of them are going to be an 8, this would have to not be an 8. That would make this a 4. Um, removes 4 as a candidate here. For this not to be an 8, this would have to be a 3. And you can see that forces this one to be an 8. Um, so however we do this, we always end up let me restore the 3's, 4's and 8's to the squares. It's this particular combination where there's an 8 common to these 3 cells means that there will always be an 8 in one of them. Now, the tricky thing here, of course, 
is that now we have to ask, we know one of these squares will be an 8, so what does that allow us to eliminate? Well, it allows us to eliminate 8 from any square that can see all three of these candidates. So unlike the Y-wing, where we only needed the cell to see two, only the cell only needed to see the two wings of the Y-wing, this being a wing and this being a wing, here we have to see all three squares. Now, are there... Are there, or is there a square here that sees all three of these squares? Yes, this one. This square sees all three of our x, y, z wing squares and therefore we know this square here cannot contain an 8 because we know there will be an 8 in one of the x, y, z wing squares. So this square is going to be a 9 and I'm not certain but I imagine that's going to be seriously helpful in terms of solving the puzzle. It gives us several more numbers immediately. This 9 here and this 9 here I mean I can put a 9 there uh, and that means I can put a 9 there actually. And now I need to place 1 and 7 in column 4 so that's going to have to be a 7, that's going to have to be a 1, that's going to have to be a 1 it looks like that was the crucial step. Um, I don't want to speak too soon, but certainly it looks like that's really broken the puzzle open, doesn't it? So 2, 2, 1, 1. That's going to have to be a 1. That means this is a 1. This is a 6. I think that means this has got to be the 3. That means this is an 8. It's, it's just, it looks like it's just falling apart. Um, it's actually remarkable how these things do fall apart so completely once you get, you know, you know once you find the trick, they really do break. Um, it's going to have to be the five. Eight like that. Pencil mark the eights up here. Uh, five, seven, eight to place here. This has got to be a seven. That's going to completely roll. Yeah. So the whole thing completely collapses once you spot the X, Y, Z wing. Isn't that weird? Um, so five and seven to these squares. So five, seven, five, five. 8, 8, and hopefully 7, and there we go, all done. So another nice new technique today. I hope that was useful, and um, if you do enjoy the content, please do subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate that, and we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.